how what did you see from Max Scherzer uh, on Wednesday, and how encouraged are you by that performance? Well, very encouraged to the fact we threw, what, 68 against hitters. Um, maintained his stuff throughout all 68. You know, we had that track man thing set up, and he didn't skip a beat from 1 to 68. That was the encouraging part. Need to sharpen up a little bit. We're going to throw a bullpen here in a few minutes. And... Uh, Try to hone it in a little bit more. But overall, very encouraging the fact that he bounced back and played a good game of catch yesterday. And we're looking all thumbs up for today. I don't know if you're in position to say this, but Boach said today he might announce a starter for game one. I'm not Boach. OK. <laughs> I just thought I'd ask. Hey, speaking of Boach, I was going to ask you, with Boach and uh, Dusty, you know, two old school guys that everybody, we've been talking about the old school guys, what is it that they do so well that enables them to continue to have success as much as the game has changed around them and around guys like you? I think the belly's the same. Um, the game will tell you what to do. Go with a gut instinct. Uh, see how the game's moving along. And... Uh, that's the refreshing part of it, that it's, you know, we don't have scripts. It's uh, if a guy's looking good, he's looking good, he keeps going. If it gets a little wayward, somebody else takes the place, you know, pass the ball to the next guy. So that's, uh, and I think well, one common trait that, you know, they share is uh, they let coaches coach and delegate. They're very, both very good delegators. What does walk slow, talk slow, think fast actually mean? I think you witness it each post game, right? It's uh, he's ahead of the game. Boach is. He's a couple innings ahead. Um, has a feel for what he wants to do. But when he explains it, it takes a while. When he makes a pitch and change, it takes a while. But he's thinking fast all along. Does um, if there been for us, right? I mean, there seemed like there have been a couple of specific instances. What you guys did in Game One with your pitching, um, the lineup change he made for Game Two. Have there been instances that you've seen up close where his reputation as a postseason manager has been applied and palpable that that have made a difference to you? Well, I think it's a winning concept, you know. Um, talk about game one, that was the uh, the Haney to Dunning. You know, those are things we talked about. We knew how it was going to shape up on the end, but how were we gonna, how were we going to get there? But then, you know, we did absorb the uh, some information about the ballpark we're in and said, huh, well, you know, we're unfamiliar with that ballpark. We said, that makes all the sense in the world. So, uh, all right, that makes sense. Let's go with it. And we knew that we had a kind of spot in the order where this guy's going to fit in, where that guy's going to fit in, and it worked. It worked well. And because those things have worked all year long, we're here. You know, sometimes you set up there as a, as a fan or as a coach or a player or manager, and you say, you know, are we going to, are we going to win another game this year? And then there's times where you say, we might not lose another game this year. And right now we're at that point where we're in a good spot. We feel really good about the ball club. You worked with Jordan Montgomery before he got to Texas, obviously. Have you mm -hmm. seen him like, raise his game to a different level since he's gotten here? Or is he just, just in a groove? Like, have you seen something different this year versus previous year? He's a better pitcher this year. Last year when... Working with him for the first time, there was some <clears throat> things that he uh, he had the tools. He just didn't have them in his toolbox when he went out there. Kind of ex expanded on his repertoire about, you know, you do this really well, you do this really well. You do this really well, but you don't do it enough. So why don't we kind of mix this in a little bit more with your with what we want to do and then you know, we get down to hitter sensitive things that we want to do, and he's able to execute. And that's the biggest thing is when you execute, good things are going to happen. And then if you execute the right pitch, well, you know, that's where you get the 
very weak contact or you know swings and misses and or sometimes called strike threes looking or strike one looking but he's all about uh, taking in the information but I would say his uh, execution is what makes him when he's on top of his game he's executing he's got good stuff you know let's not deny that but it comes from that way up way up top angle you know and um, he's got something for every hitter right left tall short doesn't matter how big has Jonah Heim been for the success of this pitching staff this year and the, the game planning him and Bobby and even you know Mitch do back there I'm glad you asked that watching Jonah grow this year has been great and I think as it's come down where he's caught every game now He's getting better and better and better, and he's getting more comfortable. And I think that's the big thing is, you know, you support your guys. And, you know, sometimes uh, a game doesn't go your way. And you'll say, man, you know, why, why are we doing this or why are we doing that? Which you learn from those things. And Jonah has definitely learned from him, and he has stepped up his game, and he's taken full responsibility back there. He's not the loudest guy in the world, needless to say. But his, his heart's big, and he gives a damn. And that's the one thing that we can't overlook with Jonah just because he's a quiet guy. You know, he is really engaged in every pitch we throw and really with the advanced stuff when we sit down every day. So Jonah has been the unsung hero of this postseason run. What, what, uh, what do you see from Mr. Chapman? Uh, game to game, it seems like it's can, can be highs and lows. There can be. We just got to go for more highs and lows. Um, I would say it's exciting when he goes out there. It's not every day you get to see, you know, a beast with that kind of stuff. When he gets it, um, the hitters engaged, he's got more than they got. And, um, you know, the other day he went out there, struck out the first guy, and then got a CNI single jams up the next guy and then all of a sudden we're over the plate but maybe just a tick low which put him behind the eight ball and uh end up walking a couple guys but pico came in and covered that up very well um, the offense gave us a lot of wiggle room too but chappy we um are learning him since we acquired him we've learned him you know did we push him hard at times yes um so we're kind of learning how to use him and I think the the smarter we use him, the better he's going to be, and the better we're going to be. Feels to me like we talked to you a bunch about this during spring training, but haven't talked to you since. And the pitcher's defense has shown up all year for this club, or at least it, it looks like it has. Mm -hmm. Are you? I don't want to say content, but have you been happy with? how the pitcher's defense has progressed this year and, and has it been an asset for this club? I'm tickled pink. I think it has to be important um, going back to February. Yeah, it's important. Anytime a pitcher touches the ball, it should be an out. If you can turn outs into outs, it's less outs you have to get throwing the baseball. And I think it really showed up big in Tampa. Uh, Monty making that play on that safety squeeze that they attempted, that was that was a game changer right there. You see the big man, <laughs> the big man going down with a big splash was uh, that was kind of cool. But you know, you just see the way the guys uh, don't have to think about where they're supposed to be now. Um, you know, Evaldi's a pro. I'm sure he's been doing this a long time. But every time that ball's hit to the right side, he's he's over there before Nate Lower Marcus can catch the ball. Same with Dunning. You know, he's a really good fielder. Um, everybody's done really, really well with it. But it started six months ago or seven months ago with uh, it has to be important. Do one more here. Yeah, just one thing on Evaldi. You know, I, again, early in the year, you talked a lot about him and his engagement and how engaged he was with teammates and caring. Just curious what you've seen the last couple of weeks as the postseason has gotten started and he's – started to carry a, a bigger load again. Anything that's kind of resonated with you? He's been there, done that. You know, he's uh, – I think he really likes the moment. And if you like that moment, um, good things happen. And that's where he's 
<clears throat> really stepped up. You know, he was one of the best pitchers in the game up, you know, up until the All Star game. Um, was fantastic, just on a heck of a roll. Uh, April, May, and June, and then he had that little setback with the uh, injury coming after the break, and a little tough selling getting back into it. But we committed to uh, stretch this guy out at the major league level and not go with the rehab. There were some bumps. There were bumps early on, but uh, each time he got better and he got better and he got better. And glad we did it because he's on top of his game right now. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, you Mike. bet. Thank you. Thank you.